Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Today's video is going to be on number two on the new general curriculum math subtest. This is a great new exam out there for teachers. I highly recommend you check it out if you're an elementary school teacher or even a middle school teacher taking a teacher certification exam. I'll start by reading over number two. It has to do with number sense vocabulary and we'll work through the math and solving it. Let's begin. Number two. If k represents an irrational number, which of the following operations must always result in an irrational number? Read that to yourself real quick. Read it over and highlight some of that math vocabulary, like irrational number. That, that really sticks out. Would you agree? There's other stuff here, too, like operations. And, and we can, if we look at this closely, we can see, hey, look, we have all these operations going on. That's all number sense stuff. There's even things like algebra. Whenever you have variables, like k is a variable, well, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a leading into algebra. And if we look even closer, all these things right here, they're algebraic expressions. Again, uh, I'm mixing in another idea here. But, um, but we can leave that out right now, and we can just focus on what we're going to need to do to solve the problem. If we focus in on the keyword irrational number, Sometimes it's, it's really helpful to get a sense of what an irrational number is. And, and, and a lot of teachers, they just give you the answer. I don't want to do that because I feel like irrational number, to understand an irrational number, you have to understand what a rational number is because that's really the root. And that's what this problem is really about, understanding what a rational number is so you can cross off three of these answers so that you're able to identify which one is the irrational one. So let's take three minutes and clarify the difference between rational and irrational numbers. In uh, almost all the elementary school tests, you're going to be dealing with real numbers. And that's the set of numbers we're going to be focusing in on. And we can break up real numbers into two groups, rational and irrational. Rational numbers, or I like to consider rational number rats, are any numbers that can be expressed as a fraction. So I'm going to say equal to a fraction where we have uh, a divided by b, and both a and b are integers, and b doesn't equal zero. I think it's a little easier to remember. Rats can be expressed as fractions. Now let me give you some examples of uh, rational numbers. One of them is called integers. You see these, this vocabulary a lot on the exam. And this is numbers like negative 2, 1, uh, negative one 0, 1, 2, 3. An integer is a number that's divisible by 1 with no remainder, and it can be expressed as a fraction. Take, for example, 1. 1 can be expressed as a fraction. It's divisible by 1. There's no remainder. Same with 2. Same with 3. Even if we do it with the negative values, you still it's all these negative values are divisible by 1 with no remainder. Even the 0. In the 0, it's 0, and there's no remainder. Therefore, it's an integer. And since all these can be expressed as fractions, integers are all rational numbers. All right, let's look at another type of rational number. Sometimes we see on the exam whole numbers or counting, counting numbers. These are numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3. They're, they're a part of integers, but they start with 0 and 1, 2, 3. So just remember that whole numbers, it's a subset of integers, and it's numbers like 1, 2, 3. And our last subset, I don't want to get too confusing here, but our last subset is natural. Natural numbers. Natural numbers are just positive integers, like 1, 2, 3. All right, so these integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, they all can be expressed as fractions, and they're all rational numbers. What other things can be expressed as fractions? Not just integers, whole numbers, and counting numbers, but we also have fractions. Fractions, anything that's a fraction, like one half or a mixed number, like one and a half, or, um, or an improper fraction, three, and a, three halves. These are all examples of rational numbers. They're all values that can be expressed as fractions. Now, fractions are not integers because there's some remainder here. So we, we separate them from integers. Not all fractions are integers. We, 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 we separate them, but they still, because they can be represented as fractions, they fall under rational numbers. 
And any type of uh, fraction that uh, we have, we can also represent as a decimal and a percent. So anytime you see a decimal, percent, or a fraction, or any type of integer, whole number, uh, natural number, counting number, those are all rational numbers. Chris, <laughs> sounds like you named all the, re all the numbers out there. What could possibly be left? Well, these would be any number, any number that can't be expressed as a fraction. Like, like what? Well, like pi. Pi is an approximation. We don't, we don't have an exact value for pi. We say pi is approximately equal to 3.14 something, something, something. And in this way, we, we use the symbol as a way to represent a value, a, a value that has a decimal that doesn't repeat. Pi is not a repeating decimal. The decimal repeats, but randomly. So we represent this as pi, and we could say pi is irrational. We also have other values, like the square root of any prime number. I, I didn't do this over here, but a prime number is a number like 2, 3, and 5. It only has two factors, 1 and itself. Well, if you take the square root of any of these primes, like the square root of 2 or the square root of 3, they can't be expressed as a fraction. So those are also examples of the irrational numbers. All right, let's clear off the playing field here. Is it going to be? Let's decide. I'm going to use the square root of 2 in these calculations. I think this is a good number to choose. Remember, it's a prime number under the radical sign, so it's another. It's a. It's an irrational number. I'm going to do this out for each one of these. And we're going to talk about what the answers are. This is multiply. Three of them are going to um, turn into rats, and only one of them is going to be an irrational number. Let's start with uh, let's start with d for a moment. The square root of two divided by the square root of two. What does that get you? That gets you one, and one is a rat. Remember, we said a rat is any number that can be expressed as a fraction. We took two irrational numbers, we divided them, we got one, which is a rat. Let's do this one: the square root of two times the square root of two. Well, maybe you're not this familiar with multiplying square roots. What you do is you take the, the what's inside, the twos, you multiply them together. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the same as the square root of 4, which is the same as 2. And last time I checked, 2 could be represented as a fraction. Ergo, it's a rat. Cross C out. Let's keep going. Now this one right here gets you 0. Remember how we were doing this right here, this number line? 0, 1, 2, all these values here. They all can be expressed as fractions, so they're all rats. This is a rat. And we're left with a. The square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 would be equal to 2 square roots of 2. See how it has this irrational tail? Well, that keeps it an irrational number. So in this case right here, a would always be the answer. All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. I hope you enjoyed the review. Have a great day, team. Stay tuned for more. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi, team. This is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2016 Teacher Workshop Series. This year, Go Academy is holding a whole new round of workshops in math, science, English, and history, early childhood education, foundations of reading, ESL, and SEI. These are hands-on workshops designed to help teachers pass their teacher certification exams. I encourage you to check out an upcoming workshop. We're holding them in Massachusetts, New York, North Carolina, Florida, California, New Hampshire, Vermont, and a couple other states. Check out our workshop. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care.